Hey everyone, Chris Lewis from the Digital Newsroom at Fox 47 News. We are here for our Michigan History Throwback. We're at the capital of Michigan and we're going to be exploring the capital and everything about it, things that you may know, things that you might not know, with Valerie Marvin, who is the capital historian and curator. Hey everyone, Chris Lewis from Fox 47's Digital Newsroom, and today we're back at the Library of Michigan for our Michigan History Throwback. And today we're talking about Dr. Kellogg. Now, some of you might have heard of Dr. Kellogg before, or if not, you've heard of the Kellogg Company and the cereal that they've made. And we're not talking about cereal today. We're actually talking about his beliefs and his beliefs in eugenics. For those of you that don't know about eugenics, it's all about race and it's all about um, how one's race is superior to one other. And Dr. Kellogg felt very strongly about that. So we may be talking about some darker issues today in Kellogg's history, and especially Dr. Kellogg's history and some of his beliefs, but it's a really interesting part of Michigan history. We're joined today by Kendall Dara, and Kendall is a reference librarian here at the Library of Michigan. Really excited to be able to have her with us today and for her to share with us some of the pieces of Michigan history that can help you to better understand this part of Michigan history. Uh, and our collection items about eugenics generally have to do with Dr. Kellogg, which is strange. You know, you think of cornflakes and uh, sometimes exercise programs and healthy living, but you don't always think so much about other things, other kinds of philosophies that he might have been involved with, but he was a strong believer in eugenics as a way of improving the overall health of humanity. But of course, that was a particular part of humanity. He was very interested in race and specifically white people. Um, and you'll see that as we look through the eugenics material. Eugenics did not start with Dr. Kellogg. The idea of improving the human race through breeding um, really started as soon as people figured out that there were things that had to do with heredity and the development of gene research. Um, we have a a pamphlet that was put together by Dr. Palmer, and this is from 1873, on the law and intelligence in nature. And it sounds, you know, pretty sciencey. As he goes through here, he's telling about uh, scientific laws, and then he starts to tie those to genetics and also breeding among humans and how that affects the overall quality of people. This type of work continued on. We've got hereditary, heredity and marriage and address. Both of these were given to um, as speeches to the Michigan legislature to inform them on genetic heritage and uh, how to improve humanity through better breeding. Uh, one of the interesting points in this heredity and marriage is that it's our duty, our moral duty, to choose the best possible marriage partners or sex partners so that we can improve the human stock. This little thing with a kind of boring con cover is um, a textbook that came out of the eugenics movement first published in 1913. This is kind of a pre-sex ed book for girls and it gives a little bit of information about how your body works but throughout all of it the underlying information is about how to choose your best partner so that you can continue to improve the human race genetically. Kellogg really comes into the picture full force here. The first National Conference on Race Betterment, this was held in 1914 at, in Battle Creek at Kellogg's Sanitarium. Um, and this is the full program. This contains all of the speeches that were given by Kellogg and lots and lots of other people. There are names you'll recognize like Melville Dewey and his wife, they both spoke. 
And the conference topics cover everything from how to eat healthy and how to get enough exercise and why that's so important, right down to something called the eugenics uh, registry, which was something that Kellogg was very interested in developing, and we'll talk more about that soon. One of the pages, these are two different copies of the same book, um, one part of this includes tables. Um, the eugenicists really tried to come up with data to support their views. Sometimes they had to kind of create the data to support their views. But this is really awful. It's uh, tables that show the rate of effic efficiency of proposed segregation and sterilization programs. So not only were the eugenicists trying to promote the right sex partners for the best possible children to be created, but also sterilization was a huge part of their program. Eugenics was all over the place, not only in Michigan. We have a copy of Science Magazine from our collection. This is a, a bound periodical from a nationally um, published magazine. And this particular issue uh, has three different articles that specifically deal with eugenics related topics. Zoology and humanity, it's about breeding. Um, scientific genealogy, and if you need something a little bit more blunt, the eugenics program as a public service. Okay, next we've got, um, what is the eugenics registry? And this is, I think, a particularly interesting little piece. Um, this was written by Glasser, but uh, Kellogg was very interested in developing a eugenics registry, which is really a breeding registry. Um, eligible adults who were interested in getting married um, ideally would put their names into this registry which would have some information about their genealogies as well to help them choose the best partner so that they could produce the best possible children genetically. Um, this book I, I just put in the mix because this is more representative of what we usually know of Kellogg, the itinerary of a breakfast and it just goes through what happens to your breakfast throughout your digestive system and then how your body uses that fuel. Really innocuous stuff, maybe a little quirky, but nothing really scary. The third Race Betterment Conference, 14 years later, I don't have the proceedings for the second one. I think that was in 1926. Then there's the third in 1928. It's all the same kind of material. There's a whole section on sterilization and biologic sin that it's sinful to mate with the wrong partner or someone who would um, bring bad genes into the human gene pool. If you'd like to read some more about Hel uh, John Her Harvey Kellogg, this book, um, John Harvey Kellogg and the Religion of Biologic Living, gives a really good overview of the development of his views on health as well as eugenics, and um, can give you a real pro um, overview of how his views changed and developed over his whole career and lifetime.